Thank you. Thank you so much, Dick. And uh, thank you for being invited to, to speak for uh, such a great audience uh, here in uh, Thaloniki. Um, I'm a bit humble because I see so many uh, very, very engaged, very energetic uh, people uh, it, as a part of the future libraries in, uh, in Greece and the surrounding uh, countries. So uh, I must see say that I'm a bit jealous too about uh, the results the future libraries already have uh, reached, including the initiatives around Aineli Balkan. I can also see the big challenge for the setup with a national library, including a public library. Or maybe I should say a new public library with an advanced national library behind because this is about switching the faces of the libraries in the future. And that was what we did uh, this summer when we opened uh, Dock 1 in, uh, in Aarhus. Aarhus is a small uh, city with 300,000 inhabitants, and uh, the Dock 1 is a library space uh, running up to nearly 30,000 square meters where at least 18,000 of them are for citizen service and libraries. So it's, it's, it's a rel relatively a big space related to, uh, to a small city. Um, but maybe we should say something from the beginning about what is libraries in the future. The transformation of the libraries is about how to uh, transform the libraries to citizens driving force for innovation. Maybe they have been that forever, but uh, we see the challenge actually now that uh, all people want to change something in their lives and to develop themselves and meet information and knowledge. Libraries are the places where the general public can find inspiration, meet new ideas, either on their own within the public sphere or in a company of others. Libraries support people with possibilities to change their lives. So how do we sketch this future? And how do we keep talking about the users and the people in a, in a, in a period where everybody has a library in the pocket or in the, in the case uh, that's 10 to 1,000 times more bigger than we had for 20 years ago? So let's keep the focus on the, on the people, on the human doing. And just to be uh, sure, I'll post this presentation on slides here afterwards and I'll repeat the address in the end. So don't take notes you don't want to take in another uh, thinking. But from the beginning, some words about the change. Uh, the change from what we are now, that information can be found everywhere to uh, what can only be experienced in a physical library, in the library. Uh, we are moving from meeting information to meeting people when we are talking about libraries. We are moving from building spaces for media to spaces as media when we are talking about libraries. That's some part of the transform, the transformation we are or the change we are in actually now uh, when we are making new libraries for the future. The Knowledge Society demanded libraries for books and medias uh, as a very, very uh, expensive resource for people, and we need to, uh, to uh, give people access to uh, information, to books, to medias, because they should need these books, these information, to be a part of a democracy. But uh, what are we doing in, uh, in the Knowledge Society? This is the pictures from the Industrial Society libraries. The left one is uh, the old library in Aarhus. The right one is a new university library, 15 years old, in Delft TU. And what you see on both libraries is a lot of artifacts called books, because more or less there is no need for these books, but they are nice to have and they give a good atmosphere, and you, they give you an impression of being very well educated when you are seeing them as a part of your daily routines. But maybe it's not so important in the future. 
In the future, libraries are for men, for human beings, for network and knowledge society. And that look, looks uh, quite different when we look at it. So here we have the future libraries. People, 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 people. But we need to do something to force the switch of thinking. I think we new, need uh, new models, new tools, and new statements uh, in the switch. One of the models could be to, uh, to uh, grab the four space model around the four part of different ways of using a library. It could be a learning space, it could be a meeting space, it could be a formative space or an inspiration space. This is another, in a way to change from thinking about libraries as uh, information centers, bookstores, etc., into what are people doing in these spaces and what are they are and what, what, what do they work with? Do they discover something? Do they participate or create or experience things in the libraries? Uh, and what is the result of this uh, work? Is it recognition or empowerment or is it involvement or innovation? Or sometimes, it, of course, there are no distinct uh, elements in this. They are floating in, over and over each other. But just some pictures from the inspiration space and some text. I only have 20 minutes and uh, I think there is maybe 15 left now, so I will skip all the texts but you can look it up on the, on the slides here after this, just to give you some pictures from the new library in Aarhus, where we have discussed this model as a part of our setting up the interior and what we are doing with people. And uh, the same way as the, around the learning space, it's, it's about staging, it's about exploring, it's about reading aloud, etc. It's about to implement different kinds of spaces in the total library space for different uh, kind of, of uh, use of the library, about guidance, about homework, etc., etc., etc. We knew a lot of all these things already. They are not brand new, any of them, I think, but we have to think about that this is what the library is working with to support people with this kind of spaces in, in the physical library. Discussions, meetings, being together, debates, etc., etc. Yes, and the performative space too. I've seen a lot of examples already today about how uh, Greek libraries are working with this. It's not brand new. Uh, it's brand new in Denmark, I would say, more or less. Uh, but workshops, experiments, edutainment, and uh, about gaming, about playing, about makerspace, etc. This is just examples of how this model can be used to force uh, switching in your thinking or in your mindset around the libraries. So what we can conclude about that is that the spaces must be adaptive and innovative for uh, supporting people, and they, the libraries are changing from storing books uh, to supporting citizens' needs. Three uh, professors at the library school in Denmark uh, three years ago made a study around, all, about, around a lot of new main city, municipal, public libraries. And they found out that there are three elements in, uh, in the construction or in the, in, in, in the thinking of the library. The library as a place, an icon maker in a city, a library as a physical space, and a library as a new possibility for relations. It's very close to one of the first presentations this morning about what is a library really uh, in, in the knowledge society. But these three elements is what a library more or less will offer to a city or municipality that uh, build a new library. So new libraries are signs or symbols on development and innovation in society. They will be drivers in the city development. They will add new stories about to, to the towns and they will be arguments for new city engagements. We've seen that in Aarhus 
We see it in Birmingham, we see it in Oslo, we see it in Helsinki, we see it in many, many cities that are building new municipal libraries. And I'm sure it's one of the things that we can think about what will happen in Athens when, uh, when the new library is uh, built there. So this is the waterfront library in Aarhus. There are different uh, project elements, just to mention that, that it's not only a library and a citizen service, it's also a, a partnership and possibility for renting space. It's an automatic parking space, it's a new urban harbor square, and it's a rival center for light rail. It's an uncovering of the river and uh, secure of the inner city against the flood, and it's a traffic regulation and it's about 300 million euros, all in all. This is the drawing of the new library. You see the parking lot in the basement, and you see two uh, levels of uh, library and citizen service, totally glass, 360 degrees, so it's in, in architectural relation. It's a non-building with an, an advanced roof because the 10,000 square meters for renting out is the roof. So what did a process for realizing this library do in, uh, yeah, we could say formally because the future is already uh, up in Aarhus because the library is open, so there's no more future related to a new library. Uh, it's, it was a huge process with the staff and the citizens uh, as a part of the change. Uh, I hear, heard something uh, mentioned related to Athen about the new library and new cultural center this morning where they are building up a new brand around the new building, around the new activities, and it's a long process. We have been under the way in 15 years working uh, with the staff, working with the tweens in, uh, in the city, working with public consultations uh, as a part of our designing of the library, uh, the co-creation, of course, with the staff, and a lot of different things. This is the architect's way of seeing the library from the beginning, or the building from the beginning, because this is the sketch they want the, con the, 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 the work uh, to do. And this is what happens under the di designing uh, period, where we start, if you start from, from the top level, you see a pentagon, and after remaking the pentagon, it ends up more or less like a square, 95 meters plus 95 meters. So this is what a redesigning process with a lot of citizens, a lot of staff, a lot of engineers, a lot of architects ended up as, but nobody can see it's, it's a square in the life. This is a part of the cooperative uh, design process we have been uh, through uh, the last uh, 10 years. I think three statements could be relevant related to, uh, to new buildings or building processes around. Uh, the first of them is the last responsible minute for decisions. It's a very, very important uh, thing. A lot of libraries have a very uh, long uh, period before they are built, and uh, in that period, we will learn a lot about how libraries should act in the future, how the buildings should support the need of the users, etc., etc., etc. So don't make any decisions before last responsible minute. Our interior plan was made four months before we moved into the building. Nothing was decided before that, and it's not needed because it takes two months to get the interior, get one month to get an amount, and get one month to move uh, the rest of the library, including the staff. So four months is enough. And of course, inclusion and participation in the process, and it's very important to look at interdisciplinary cooperation because library staff, library uh, builders, uh, engineers and architects from the city, etc., etc., only knew small parts of how a library should work in the future. But the users and a lot of other educated persons knew a lot more on their specific areas than we do. And of course, always the right team at the right time. 
the last 15 years we have prototyping, uh, tried to prototype the future, uh, setting up different uh, ways of uh, working in the, in the entrance of the old library uh, as a former place for controlling the users. It's more or less 15 years now that we left the checking in, checking out uh, done by uh, staff. All our users do it uh, themselves uh, in the daily work. So we have this area for new projects every five, six months, uh, bringing the traditional work fields on the library into this lab and uh, looking on them on different conditions. So that was, that was a part of our uh, preparing for the new library, both a preparing with the users and a preparing for the staff, because the staff is not the less important part of this. They really need to be uh, transformed or transitioned in this uh, period. So we had a lot of different uh, labs in the old library as a preparation for the new one. So what is the library as a space in the future? It's a building that supports the need of the users. It's a building that interacts with the surroundings and the environment. And it's a building that acts very adaptively and flexibility is a function. Around 50% of all square meters in Aarhus are not programmed square meters from the beginning. And there are no permanent installations in, uh, in uh, more than 60% of the library. E everything can be removed in uh, 24 hours if we want to. And that's very important related to the future. The, the dedicated uh, things in the library is very much what the architects want, but uh, it's not the future-oriented uh, part of it. Flexibility is a function. So we have had a lot of uh, user-driven processes where we try to, uh, to uh, move the users uh, trans uh, from, from tradition to transcendence and to deconstruct the old knowledge and create new sense around the library as a building. And uh, one of the things we have uh, had the opportunity to, uh, to do uh, related to economy from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and in cooperation with Chicago Public Libraries and IDO is to make a toolkit about global, uh, a global innovation model that uh, tries to uh, give tools for faster change in public libraries all over the world. And I know, I'm sure it will be a little part of the Ainelli Balkan uh, work in the, in the next year. But it's about design thinking. And it's our tool from now in the future, because we have to rethink the library every day in some ways. This is the vision that uh, the Doc one uh, has in behind, a space for cooperation, a place for dialogue, knowledge, ideas, and inspiration, an open, informal learning space, and a unique space for children and families. Nothing about media, nothing about information, nothing about physical formats books, etc., etc. It's about people. There is uh, some new ways of uh, defining the functionality. As I've said already that flexibility is functionality, but it's also to uh, maximize the unprogrammed space. I know it's difficult in a, in a period where we are arguing for economy, etc., etc., to, uh, to argue for unprogrammed space, but it's very important. Uh, and leave the media and the media formats as focus point in organizing the spaces. We have no media as organizing elements in our spaces. We have only the users and the, the support of the users in our thinking. And of course, focus the human needs. Uh, so the planning focus uh, for us ended up as a uh, this supporting cit citizens' different needs and creating different surroundings. When we are talking about creating different surroundings, we have more than 150 meters from the entrance to the end of the family children's space without any walls. It's one space over two levels. There are no walls at all in this space. So it's very much about how to create and implement different surroundings to support people in, in that's an open uh, space. So, 
So um, I would ask, argue for avoiding permanent installation and, of course, controlling the media stock. Very, very hard controlling of the media stock. In a public uh, library like Aarhus, where we have no historical demandings, etc., etc., that's all on this, the national library and the state library, these obligations. We, uh, we are controlling our media stock very, very close. And if we have an item that haven't been circulated for two years, it's normally a candidate to be dismissed. And of course, no uh, design icons in the furnitures, but that, that's more or less a Danish uh, discussion. So the interior plan ended up after this as an interior medley, I would say. It's not a straight interior plan, and we didn't have our architects as a part of the interior planning. They were, it was not a part of their contract. From the beginning, we decided that architects that be, be, are able to, to uh, visualize and build very uh, beautiful buildings often don't know anything about how to invent a library inside. So uh, we have had them as consultants if you had any problems, but we have to do the uh, interior plan ourselves. The interior plan consists of four elements. A citizen service, a public space with info, meeting rooms, cafe, auditorium, pop-up shops, democracy area, and an adult library with professional support, and a family children library with professional support. That's the only four elements that's uh, in the building. We have had uh, more than 4,000 visitors per day, seven days a week since we opened, so we have passed 650,000 visitors from, the, from summer until now. So uh, maybe related to Athens, if it's an, it's, a, it's an attractive library, maybe it's more than some hundred users per day you can expect. Uh, just about level one. And just examples of how the interior work in the library and maybe how the pointer will work in the auditorium. <laughs> yes. Just to give you some ex expressions about what a 360 degrees glass building uh, can be used for. This is the adult part of it. The ramp uh, as a very centered uh, part of the unprogrammed spaces. It's, it's around 800 uh, square meters, totally unprogrammed. This is, for example, when we were setting up uh, some, uh, some uh, activities around uh, our transformation lab activities about makerspaces, and uh, this is uh, some of the study rooms, too. This is the auditorium, the pop-up shops, the different uh, reflection zones, subject zones, etc. And some principles about the planning for family children. We had this obligation from the vision that we had to, uh, to make a special area for uh, family and children. And we defined family and children up to, children up to 12 years because children up to 12 years in Denmark want to be together with their parents or their adult uh, relatives. Uh, after 12 years, they want to be on their own. So we have a family children area up to 12 years. The rest is for adult people and a 12-year-old person in Denmark defines itself as adult, and who can affect that? None adult people can do anything about that, only accepting that they think they are, or they are adult. So uh, this is the different elements in the family children section. I think we have about 30 different uh, kind of activities in the family children section. Uh, that's open uh, to people. Partly of the opening uh, hours are without any kind of staffing in the building, so it's, it's totally on the user's own, all 14,000 square meters that's, that's open to the public. The Sween zones, the interactive floor, that's uh, very, very heavily used for children and uh, adults together. Uh, the makerspace area, and uh, the different activities that's going on there. 
yes. Yeah. Few words about partnership with external organizations, because I think that's uh, maybe the 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 way to keep the library alive in the future. Most of the activities in uh, in the dog one is uh, based on activities that the partners from outside are implementing in the library. So we made a strategy, a strategy for constant change, uh, including our partnerships, because I think the partners are the guarantee for changing in the future. And uh, they will represent an inflow of competences to the library that we don't have uh, as a, can't, can't have by hiring the staff uh, in a, in a normal way. And of course, there is a lot of political legitimacy in, in uh, setting up partnership strategies. This is the cornerstones of the partnerships in uh, DOC1, and this is uh, some of the ways that uh, it's uh, done for. We have uh, 75 partners from uh, the beginning of the DOC1 activities, and I'm sure when we are measuring out again, 1st of January, we will have uh, even more than 75 partners. So the strategy for a library, just to summarize, uh, address the need for rethinking of the library, the need for fusion between physical and virtual library elements, uh, need to develop partnerships, and need to focus on innovation and get new skills into the library, promote learning in the organization. And not at least to force users to dismiss the book as a library brand. You find it on the slides here. That's it.